Okay, how are you? Uh, Jablan again. Uh, this one is a quick one. <clears throat> I must fetch uh, my daughter from crash. No, it works. Uh, so I must fetch my daughter from crash. If you the time is extended, you pay extra one. I think it's 50 rand it, or 100 rand. So let's be quick. So this chi square of independence. So can you read around also what is chi square of goodness or fit? So I'm going to focus on chi square of, of independence that is similar to correlation, whereby we um, assess if there's a significant um, relationship between two variables. But the difference with correlation is that um, it, it, the correlation, the, the, the data is measured at least at interval, so interval or at continuous level. But in chi-square, um, it, it is measured at, in, at categorical level. You see that in, it's in categories. So I'm sharing this for with you. Uh, I entered this course already so that I don't waste much of your time. So someone clever came, you see our story, you're still using the same story. Uh, we are measuring anxiety and condition of the children watching a movie and then someone said but you cannot just separate the kids that this one is anxious this one is not let's just maybe split the anxiety the way you measure it maybe those below five or above five out of ten maybe let's say they are anxious and then those who are less let's say they are not anxious and then remember we have these conditions so alone those watching the movie alone and then watching movie at comfort and then watching the movie at home alone. So I want to assess if there's a relationship between the condition of watching a movie and then whether there's anxiety. So the anxious, another variable here is anxious, anxiety maybe, let's say so. And then the other one is the environment of watching a movie. So we want to assess if there is a significant relationship between those two variables. So you cannot run correlation because the way the data is collected. So these kind of frequencies. So if you see most us, most lecturers, they like to ask questions, but they don't tell you to run chi school to run correlation. So if your data comes in like this, so you, you, you run chi square because it's in categories. Okay, let's move. So the same way that you did manually, the same way that you did, that's what we do on Excel. So depending on the textbook that you are reading, sometimes they just write all oh, yeah. So the observed values. So the values that we have, let's say we measured. So those who are alone were anxious, they were 21. Those who were accompanied by the anxious, they were 33, something like that. Sometimes the examiners or the lecturers, does, does, they don't give you the total values like what I did here. Yeah. So you have to add 21 plus 33 plus 26 to get an 80. And then uh, that's so it's in rows and col in, in columns. Uh, and then this one, if you add this one, 20, if you add these ones, so you are going to use these values. So how do you get? So you can add these values, 80 plus 120 to make it 200. So this number of participants in a study. So the FO is observed frequency. So another textbook, like what I said, I read four textbooks. So I'm explaining from, from, what, I, from, what, I, from what I understand uh, is I, so I teach and then I'm also trying to explain um, questions as frequently by my students. So this observe frequency, sometimes in all only. So I name these cells as in uh, alone, but anxious, anxious and alone. So this one. So the observe value there is 21, sorry. 21, and then the second one, the three, and then 26. Let's be quick, otherwise I'll pay a crash. It's uh, 20 past five now, okay. Uh, that for those who have children, they understand what I'm talking about. <clears throat> and then this expected frequency. So you calculate this, the formula for that is um, uh, the column total, total for the column, and then total for the row. You multiply those two divided by, by, by N, by, by the total, by the number of participants. So meaning that for this cell, for the first cell, um, we multiply, let me just type here, 80 uh, times 40. Okay, I didn't want to move my case here. 40 and then we divide by 200. So th this for the, for the first one. So you get a 16 here. And then for the second one, you also multiply 80 
by the total of that of that uh, of that column. Is this a row? This is a column. So it's a column total multiplied by row col row total. So eighty times 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 hundred divided by two hundred. So that answer divided by two hundred. So you get forty, and then on the third one you get twenty four. I don't want to waste much of the time. And then the other one, 24 as well. And then 60. And then the last one, you are going to get 36. So where is 36 coming from? The part I said is 120. So it's 36 for this. So it's 120 times 60. That answer divide that by 200. Okay. So the advantages of doing it in Excel is it saves you time. So now we want to subtract this. We want to subtract. F O. Remember the the the, the uh, equation for for chi square of independence sum of in brackets F O minus F E squared divided by by F E. So that's what we're doing. So this the total of this. So that's the equation for chi square. It's not chi square but chi square. So we want to subtract this. So it's twenty one minus sixteen. So um, sorry for these notifications. So you 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 click. Is it a click? Click on equal sign. Uh, so 21 and then click on the minus sign we want to minus this one and then enter so you don't have to do that for all the cells and, and this answer so you go to this corner I don't know how to call it in Excel those are very good in Excel in Excel Excel so you go at the very corner until your case is a little bit thin and then you drag down like this so it knows, it memorizes what you want to do going down. And then for this one, we want to scale, we want to square this number. So it means that. So you press on equal sign and then five. You you hold your your shift and then in my on my on my laptop is on six, the kind of a V that is vice versa. A V that is facing the other way around, that is facing on top. I don't know what you call it. Up, a two as for yeah you do that and then you click on two so we want to square so we are squared in that number so that's what you do then i don't know if you got what i said you can uh, pause and repeat and something like that and then you do the same like what i did here and then for this we want to it means that this answer divided by Fe. So it means that 25 divided by 16. So you 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 also move your case in there and then equal sign. And then the quarter said you want 25 divided by, so that's a divided by, by 16 and then enter. So 1.56 and then you do the same. You drag it down and then release. So we want the total of that. You can use the what most people do. So we want some of that. So enter. So meaning that chi square, that chi square is like a kind of an X with a with a square. Um, so that's that's the chi square of independent. This is the value that we get. But this value doesn't tell us much because we need to find is it significant or not significant when you compare with the critical value of the chi square. So for this, it's a three by two. So it means that for degrees of freedom for that is R minus in brackets minus one. So how many rows are there? Minus one. And then how many columns are, columns are there? Minus one. So it means that here we have um, two rows. So two minus one, that's one one and then with three columns so three minus one that's two so it means that is three times two so the answer is two so you go in the back of the textbook i have a video also that i shared with you how do you check for that so i think this is a freedom for two under chi square i think it's 5.99 so i think it's 5.99 if it's you're using 0 0.0.05 point, point, point so if you're using 0 0.01 it's another one i think it's nine point something i'm not sure Okay, I must be quick. I must go and get my child. And so you compare these values, like what I showed you on that video. Go and check that video. How to locate? I did that video, so you can able to. Are you rejecting or are you failing to reject um, 
the null hypothesis if you compare these two numbers. So if the critical value is greater than the obtained value, what do you do? Go and read about that. And now you can make a conclusion. Now there is a significant difference between these two variables that I'm talking about. And if there's significant value, you can, you can proceed to calculate the effect size. Okay. I think I have a video to do effect sizes of t-test, um, ANOVA, and chi-square, and something like that. I think this helps. You can do the same also when you do it manually. But the advantage of, of Excel is that you see I was dragging down. You save a lot of time. Now, what else? I don't think there's anything that I want to explain here. Yeah, th thank you so much. Uh, I, I, think, I think these videos um, are helping. So yeah, we'll see how it goes then. Okay, thank you.